Hi and welcome to our today demo which is about DPDK or Data Plane Development Kit. As we studied during the course in the Linux systems, normally the application which are sitting in the user space, in order to be able to communicate with the networking, with the networking stack like network, uh, network interfaces, physical interfaces or virtual interfaces, they need to talk to the Linux kernel and the network driver that is handling and com using, communicating with the network controller or that particular NIC card. This method may create some inefficiency whenever you are creating some very high performance applications like the packet processing applications and S NFV applications like high performance IPS, firewall, load balancer. DPDK comes to the play and can help us to make a direct communication between the network controller, the network interfaces and the application. So the application will be able to use the DPDK libraries in order to directly communicate with the network controller. Not only the applications, but DPDK also can be used with along with OVS. So we can compile OVS and DPDK together and build the OVS with DPDK solution, which, which is OVS along with the PMD driver of DPDK, which is able, which makes the OVS switch to be able to communicate with the physical network interfaces. So these physical inter network interfaces, which normally they come through a driver and get connected to the to the OVS, in this method, you know, we will be presenting directly the network interface through a, uh, through one of these PMD drivers to the OVS. So all of the virtual machines or the containers that are connected to our OVS in the user space, they will be able to communicate directly to the network interface without need to talk to anything in the kernel space with the kernel. All right, so let's have a look at our diagram today uh, we got we got the physical server which is the HP DL380 generation 5 and this server is hosting uh, an Ubuntu version 16 and we have another physical device here which is called PC1 and this device is just a, a network enabled device we will use it for doing uh, doing the communication ping testing between the PC1 and the virtual machine which we have here so within this server we will have uh, a KVM hypervisor and the KVM will be running two virtual machines. Both of them are running on Ubuntu 16 and with these two IP address 10.10.10.11 and 12. And we will be creating an OVS and DPDK, OVS DPDK uh, virtual switch here. We will use the DPDK version 17.05 and OVS version 2.8.0. Uh, we will be creating a virtual bridge, virtual bridge called virtual bridge number zero, and we will be adding the two uh, network ports here to the virtual bridge, which is called, uh, which is a based on DPDK virtual host user. That's a new type of the um, network interface, which normally the OVS does not support, but after you compile OVS along with DPDK, these are the new type of the interfaces, which will be enabled for, for the OVS. So we will create these new virtual interfaces and we will assign these virtual interfaces to our virtual machines. We will start our virtual machines and we will make sure they can communicate with each other. Then later we will bind uh, the network interface which we have here, the physical network interface. Uh, these are the Intel uh, network interfaces which are using the E1000E drivers. We will be unbinding this interface from the kernel uh, so normally this interface is uh, is presented to the kernel as ENS3F1 and we will be unbinding this interface and will connect it to the to our DPDK OVS switch. Uh, once we do that, we should be able to be able to communicate from the host one uh, from sorry the PC one and the virtual machines which we have here. So this communication will happen all over over the DPDK without being kernel being involved at all. We will start by downloading and compiling the DPDK in this machine. And later after that, we will compile also the Hello World sample application of DPDK. We will execute that to show you how DPDK uses the CPU cores. After that, we will be downloading and compiling OVS along with DPDK. So with the specific switches to compile OVS along with DPDK. So our OVS will be DPDK enabled. 
uh, once we have done that we have uh, we have an obvious working obvious we will create a bridge called virtual bridge 0 vbr0 and we will add the two interfaces which we will be using for the virtual machines the vhost user 1 and vhost user 2 uh, after that we will start our vm1 and vm2 uh, these two virtual machines are already created so the QCOW2 format files are already available I have created already them uh, we just create a virtual machine and attach the disks which we have here and we will start the virtual machine while they are connected to the new virtual interfaces which we created already once the virtual interfaces uh, are up connected to the virtual machine and virtual machines are booted up, we will do a basic test of connectivity between these two virtual machines. The test will be through our virtual bridge 0, VBR0, and that bridge is served by OVS and DPDK. Once we have that, these two virtual machines be able to communicate with each other through our VBR0, we will be binding the new PCI interface, the PCI interface ENFS, uh, 3F1 to the DPDK so we will detach that from the kernel we will connect that to our to the DPDK and then we will connect that interface to the to the VBR0 to our virtual bridge in the OVS so first we unbind it from the kernel we connect it to the DPDK and then after that we connect it to our uh, VBR0 and then we will do a basic test of connectivities between the virtual machines and the PC1 which is the external device connected here these two versions which are, we have here, the DPDK version 1705 and OVS 280, these two are compatible with each other. So whenever you are planning to build OVS and DPDK together, you need to make sure that you are using the two supported versions. So normally in OVS release note, you can find what DPDK version is supported. So you can choose first, you can first choose your OVS version and based on that, you can find, you know, what, what DPDK version is supported and you can choose the, the DPDK version. Let's also have a look at dpdk.org, the, the website, the official website of DPDK. Uh, so here it gives us, you know, a lot of information about the DPDK, about the project. Uh, if we go on DPDK core and if we go on uh, documentation, we have documentation, supported hardware. If we just go on the supported hardware, uh, the physical net, the physical and virtual network interfaces, they are all you know listed down here. So these are showing all the network network vendors, the chipset vendors uh, that are so supported. So for example, Intel. E1000, E1000E, so these are the chipset numbers of the Intel which is supported with uh, in DPDK. Or uh, Cisco, Marvel, you know, all of them are uh, listed here. In virtualized network interfaces, the Virtio Net, the Camo is supported, and also the VMware ESXi, the VMX Net 3, that's also supported. Also Hyper-V and, you know, this one AVP, WindRiver Accelerated Virtual Port, that's also supported. So it's not everything supported on uh, with DPDK, but mostly you can say, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, currently available installed working virtual network interfaces are all supported here. Uh, if you go on documentation, uh, the documentation section, uh, it provides a programmer's guide and, you know, user guide API documentation as well. So to start with, we just uh, go on Linux user guide and here we get all the details of you know what do we need to start uh, compiling and uh, setting up the the environment for for running the DPDK. Uh, it gives us pretty much uh, good information, the basic system requirements. So you need to make sure that this is the, the basic uh, requirements are met. And to start with, uh, we, we just need a machine with uh, with the build tools and also the NUMA or non-uniform memory access that library also is required um, also uh, there is a uh, article from Intel if you go on the Intel website and find these type of articles about open v switch and DPDK they provide pretty much nice uh, overview tutorial that how you can build and uh, build the OVS and DPDK together uh, in different operating system like you know this one is with Fedora you know, they have another one for you know Ubuntu and uh, different stuff are available on the Intel website um, 
So to start with, um, uh, the prerequisite for the machine is to have all the development tools as well as the, the packages which has been listed here. Uh, NUMACTL is very important, we need to have that. Uh, I have already installed all of these tools on our Ubuntu host which we have and we will start with building, downloading and building the DPDK. Uh, so first let me go to the DPDK website. If we go to the download section uh, of, the, of the DPDK. Uh, here there are different versions and we will be using this one, the version 1705.2 and I will copy the link location. The reason that we are using this version is that after this version the DPDK requires to requires the CPUs on the machine to support SSE version 4.2. So SSE is an instruction set uh, of the processor and the processor which we have on this host on the host which we are doing the demo is not a modern processor so it doesn't support that SSE version 4.2 so uh, we have to use the, the latest uh, the latest version which does not require SSE uh, 4.2 uh, so let's start with uh, accessing to our host and continue from there. Okay, so let me SSH to to our host one six eight two hundred two hundred password and so in this machine I will do a sudo ss because most of the stuff we are going to do is all related to uh, it needs to be executed as root. Okay. So let's create two directories uh, in slash opt. We create a dpdk folder and also we create an OES folder. So whatever we have related to dpdk, we'll put it in a slash opt slash dpdk. Now let's download the the dpdk uh, uh, version 1705. Let me again copy the link location and put it here. So we got downloaded. Okay, the file is downloaded. Now let me unzip the file. And okay, so now we got a folder for that. See the DPDK stable. Now we need to start uh, compiling the the DPDK. So for compiling it, let's go back to to the guide, and you know we can continue from there. So. We downloaded the, the DPDK, we extracted it, and we need to be already in that folder. And we need to create this variable DPDK DIR, uh, which will be PWD, the, the same folder, slash build. So let's do this part. And then we need to execute this command, make config uh tx86 64 native linux app gcc because you can compile uh dpdk in different formats you know using gcc or icc and also it depends on the architecture of the machine okay so configuration is done and we need to do this set to put the output inside the build config file that's also is required here okay and finally, we run the make to compile the DPDK here. So the compile includes the drivers uh, for DPDK along with all the uh, all the other libraries of DPDK. Everything will get compiled uh, using this uh, simple command. Okay, so now we have the compile is over. So let's also compile the example. So, by, so when we compile the application, uh, by default, the examples doesn't get uh, compiled. So we'll go to examples. And here are all the examples of the DPTK located. So we use the hello world as the example. So here, just the C file is there and the make file. We just run make. And uh, now, that is already compiled. Now we got the build folder. If I go inside the build folder and there is a hello world uh, executable. So if I execute hello world without any parameters, so this is the first DPDK application that we have. And it says uh, environment abstraction layer. Uh, so it found 
two PCI devices which are compatible with DPDK. So that's the the, the driver is Net uh, E1000EM, and these are the PCI addresses 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, E000, 0, and the other one is 0, 0, 0.1. So we got two interfaces and we got hellos from eight cores. So the processor which we have here, we got two processors in this machine and each processor has four cores. So DPDK was able to allocate and use each of the CPU cores for, for using for the you know application that you're going to build on top of the DPDK. If I do a slash uh, proc CPU info, so here we got eight CPU cores. Uh, they are Intel X5450 and here also we can see actually that uh, was the SSC. So we got SSC 4.1 supported on these processors. Uh, but the latest, I mean the, the versions of the DPTK after 1705, they saw they require SSC 4.2 instruction set. So that's why we use the, the version uh, 1705. Okay, so now what we have done is we have fully comp compiled uh, the DPDK and everything is done in the build folder. So the build folder has been created and here is all the details. Everything and the you know, kernel modules also has been compiled here. Now let's go back to our uh, guide and we continue from there okay so we finished this part we finished building the dpdk now we will go for the obs so we will download the obs and we compile the obs uh, along with the dpdk so th this one actually is uh, requires a different version so let's go to the uh, to the obs uh, website for downloading i just download i uh, search download obs download open virtual switch and here is version 280 this is the version i'm looking for i will copy the location go back here and so in slash opt we have another folder called ovs uh, let's download that the package okay the package we got now let me unzip it Okay, and uh, here we go. This is the source of the open virtual switch version 2.8.0. So let's continue now. Uh, let's go back here. So we downloaded the package, we extracted it, and uh, we are already in that folder. We need to export OVSDIR, this, this variable. So uh, PWD just uh, creates uh, the same folder i mean add just the same folder the current folder that we have here let me paste it okay and we need to execute the boot dot slash boot dot sh and then we configure with uh with these variables dot slash boot dot sh okay 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 so this is done and the next one is the dot configure uh, with DPDK. So DPDK DIR, which we created earlier, that environment variable, and with these flags, uh, which are here. So let's do the configuration. Okay, so the config is done. Now we are ready for compiling it. Uh, to compile, we use the make with these flags. Let's apply that. And now that the OVS is being compiled along with DPDK, so it uses the reference to the DPDK, it compiles OVS DPDK enabled uh, application. Okay, so the compile is done, no errors at all. And Okay, now our next step is to do some configuration with uh, uh, OVSDB and starting the OVS, uh, OVSDB server. So these are the commands which we have, which we have copy and apply there. So let me copy these and paste it there one by one. Okay, so let's get back here and, okay. 
So actually this kills if there is anything running as OVS and it starts the OVS here. If we do PS fax, then we should have the OVS DB also saying that, you know, it's running here. Okay, let's get back here. Uh, so our OVS DB is started. Now, uh, we need to do some configuration for the huge page, uh, for, for huge pages. Uh, so for this one, you need to add these variables, uh, some huge page sizes to the uh, to the grub, and then you have to uh, build the grub and reboot the machine. So I have already done that. And now after that, you need to uh, do this part, just to mount the, uh, the, huge, the huge files. You can do this and let me paste this here. Okay, now we will get into uh, com doing the configuration of the OVS and DPDK. So with this part of the configuration, we will be starting the vSwitchD, which is the main process of the uh, OVS. So let me copy this command here. Actually, this one is the same as the OVS DB, which we started already, but in this guide, because after changing the, the page file, this machine requires a reboot, you know, they have mentioned this command again because uh, that OVS DB server will get stopped after the after machine restart. And the other one here is to start the vSwitch D along with and this one, all these two also for configuration of the kernel module which we have here. Now let me copy these and we put them here. Okay. So let's see what we got. Uh, so that's it, the OVS DB is already running because we know it's already started, we, we have that. And uh, here we are getting a few, after starting the vSwitch D here, we get some information that's okay. So eight cores in NUMA mode zero. And this is important, the DPDK info DPDK is disabled. Uh, it is saying that you have to use the config DPDK init to enable it. So let's enable that. And I think it's better to restart the vSwitch D also. To, to enable the, uh, the DPDK, I use this command. Uh, we, I call OVSCTL set open, open vSwitch and the other config is DPDK init is true. Okay, so that is done. Now let's see if that is enabled. Let me uh, we call for, we look, let's kill the vSwitch D. Okay, and let's kill one eight nine two zero. Okay, so that is completely died. And we run again the vSwitch D. Okay, now it is saying that DPDK is enabled and these are all the other uh, debug logs from the DPDK inside the OVS. So we started OVS, OVS is talking to DPDK and these are some information from DPDK. It says that, hey, I have, I can see two network devices, two PCI devices at these two addresses. They are DPDK compatible and some other stuff, you know, like, you know, I have detected eight CPU cores, for example, which can be used and, you know, other information. So now we have our OVS connected to the DPDK. So we have OVS then DPDK uh, ready to go. Let's see uh, what is the next step, what we have to do. So we have done this already. Now, these are a few settings that, you know, it can be done for uh, for limiting the number of the cores that that the OVS can use, but these are uh, in this example actually is for the machines which have they have many CPU cores. So this machine here, I think it has uh, two processors, each one with uh, fourteen or twenty eight CPU cores, which uh, you know is too much comparing to what we have. So we don't need to. Uh, make this configuration here. So all the CPU cores which we have, we make it enabled for being used with our with our OVS and DPDK. Uh, so now we will start with doing the logical configuration and creating a bridge, 
we create obvious we use obvious ctl and we will create a bridge bridge zero um then after that this is the uh interesting part that we use the obvious ctl again to add a port to the bridge zero uh, which is called the type of that port is dpdk user uh dpdk host user virtual host user now uh to check that what are the port types supported by by the ovs we can use the command here that is it is dot slash utilities obvious ctl get open we switch that space my face type okay so or open we switch now it supports these the these network type dpdk dpdkr dpdk virtual host user so dpdk this type is for the physical interfaces that will connect dpdk virtual host these are the virtual interfaces and we got other interfaces also supported by uh, by our uh, obvious but if you if you compile obvious standard obvious it does not support any of these dpdks so now we can use uh, we can create our virtual breach and we can continue from there so let's go back here and we can actually copy all of this just direct obvious ctl add a bridge bridge zero set bridge bridge zero data path type net dev and create a port inside the bridge the bridge zero which called virtual host virtual virtual host dash user one set interface virtual host user type dpdk v host user and another one here if i call obvious ctl just say show and it shows me that we have a bridge zero and bridge zero has got a port called v host user one the type of that port is dpdk virtual host user so we have already created our if we go back here we created the virtual bridge zero we created we added these two interfaces to it and now we are ready to launch our virtual machines to see if we can communicate between the virtual machines and the okay so to start the virtual machines i have already uh, put the comments prepared the comments here that we will use the chemo system uh, we assign one gigabyte of memory to each virtual machine so we have two virtual machines here and this one is using vdisk virtual machine one dot img so this is the uh, the hard drive the hard drive image of this one and this one is vm2 so two different virtual machines are running here and what in another important thing we have here is that uh for for the networking device we are telling that you know you have to go and use slash user local var run open v switch v host user one so that's the uh, socket for for the network and the network device for this virtual machine is called v host user and it has to be created and added as a virtual io net pci with this mac address which we have here and these are related to the to the memory and the huge pages that you know we had and also i have added the vnc uh, to start at uh, port number 5901 and this one starts at another vnc port so we can have vnc to these two virtual machines uh, so once I start, uh, this will be on the command line. We need to we need to create. Let me add uh, two more. We can we can start the first one here? So this is the first one. Let me create another uh, shell. Okay, and. Uh, You know everything as root here and this one okay so the two virtual machines are uh, they should be booting up 
Uh, we can access them from the VNC. So I have a VNC client here and I have already configured two destinations. Uh, the same host, uh, 191, say 200, 200. Now port number 5901 and 5902. So 5901 should be our VM1, which now we have Ubuntu VM1. I can log in as myself. And if I do if config, it should show me. So we got the interface and the IP address of that interface is 10.10.10.11. .10 .10 now we have both vm1 and vm2 here in our vnc let me log into vm2 as well and let's see so we got this one also on the vm2 with the ip address 10.10.10.12 so if you go back our virtual in our drawing we have 10.10.10.11 virtual machine 1 and 12 as virtual machine 2 both connected to the virtual bridge here and now here let's see if we can access between these two so these two are connected to our uh, virtual bridge to the obvious so let's see from virtual machine 2 is ping.10.10.10.11 which is able to ping so this ping the traffic is going all over inside the obvious tpdk and from there is being switched to the virtual machine one that's what is happening now okay so we already built this part and we did the test of connectivity between VN1 and VN2. Now we need to provide some physical access to these virtual machines to use the DPDK and use this NIC without going through the kernel and drivers to direct access to the PC, PC1 here. So let's try to do that now. Okay, now since we have these two shells are busy, uh, let's create another shell and the access to the uh, server. Okay, and let's go to our dpdk directory. Uh, dpdk and dpdk stable. Here we got a folder also called user tools, which are full of few uh, Python files, which are uh, helping us for doing the binding and also the setup also is like a uh, wizard thing that you know you can use it for for building the dpdk as well so this is also something easy that you can use uh, so let's start with uh, dpdk dev bind so dev bind is a utility for binding the, the interfaces from the kernel so taking it out of the kernel and connecting to the to the dpdk uh, so let me call that uh, dot slash dot slash uh, user tools and dpdk the bind so if we call it with dash dash status uh, this one it gives us information about uh, the network devices using the kernel divider the uh, driver so right now we have four network devices we have two net extreme these are broadcom uh, physical network interface these are the onboard uh, of the of the server and we have these two which is intel 82571 network uh, uh network interface which uses the driver of uh, e1000e uh, these two are using bnx2 and let's see if the bnx2 is also supported or not and go back here to the pdk website go on supported hardware uh broadcom broadcom bnx T is supported. Uh, I don't know actually. Is it uh, the BNX2 also is supported or not? So, uh, but anyway, so our DPDK also only reports these two interfaces are available. If you remember when we run the uh, the Hello World application, uh, it reported these two interfaces are supported by the DPDK. So what we'll do is that you know right now these two interfaces are in the kernel. They are ENS. F0 and ENS F1. If I do an IP link here, you will see that we have ENS 3 F0 and ENS 3 F1. Both of them are presented here. And these two are the Broadcom interfaces ENP 3 S0 and ENP 3 5 S1. 
and these are the virtual breach uh, this is the bridge zero obvious net dev and this is a default uh, virtual bridge interface which is there um, okay so now let's start binding let's start binding the interface that we are looking for so we are looking for binding the interface one ens 3 f one to the dpdk so for doing that we call same command it call it dash dash bind equal to uio underscore pci generic now we have to put uh, the pci address of that card um, so all the only identifier we use is the pci address which is this one and okay so it didn't work let's see okay so this year it might be related to the to the kernel module to the ui a ui or pci generic that's the driver which the dpdk uses uh let's see in our ls modules latest one is the loaded one is open v switch uh let's strip uio no yeah there is no kernel module it's the kernel module is not loaded so we have to load the kernel module for uio this one the uio pci generic this version uh, kernel module has to be loaded as a uio underscore PCI underscore generic okay now the kernel module is loaded and let's try to check what's our current status uh, okay so now our network device actually jumped to other network device because we couldn't make it uh, successfully so let's take this one back into the kernel so taking that back to the kernel, we can use we can use the same bind command and just to specify the driver. So E1000E. Okay, so it didn't give any error. And let's see. Yeah, so it's back here. So all of our interfaces are currently under the kernel driver. Now let's do this again and assign this interface to the to the DPDK. So we call this it UIO underscore PCI underscore generic. Okay, no errors. That means that the kernel module is working. And here we go. So now our interface is in the network device using DPDK compatible driver. So this network interface now is in the DPDK user space world. And if I do IP link, sorry, we will not be able to see ENS F1. That's gone. So kernel doesn't see that interface anymore. We have ENS 3F0, but we don't have ENS 3F1. So from the kernel perspective, that interface does not exist, but actually it's connected to the DPDK. So now the interface is in the DPDK. Now we have to connect that interface to our OVS switch. For doing that, we can use, use the standard OVS commands for adding that interface. So let's go to our uh, OVS folder. Okay, and we call from utilities. I'll see the open switch. And OVS CTL. Let's do a show first. Okay, so the bridge is bridge zero, and we call add port on BR zero, and the port name is uh, we are going to call call it as DPDK P zero. Okay. 
dpdk-p0 dash set interface that's a uh, uh, this description here we'll call it dpdk dash p0 as well here now this is important the type is dpdk so it's not dpdk v host uh, it's just the dpdk which is a physical interface now we have to tell which what interface it is so we say options column dp dk dash device arguments equal to so now we have to specify the pci uh, address of that uh, what was that pci address uh ah, here we go we have it here so we will copy the full address and okay one second maybe we have done something wrong yeah we have missed the equal here okay and we have another error here because i have used equal instead of dash okay and now it is saying that because it's already created so we have to delete it first and let's say tail port uh, what is it called dpdk on the page zero dpdk dash p0 okay so that's gone and uh, we call the command okay so no errors and now here we have our bridge zero the bridge zero has two virtual interfaces dpdk virtual host users and we have a dpdk zero interface which is actually connected to this pci address and this pci address does not exist anywhere in our kernel so we don't have ens3f1 that's gone right and if we go here there should be a pc connected here and if we are able to access and access to this ip that means that you know that the uh, the solution is working or dpdk is able to act to, to provide access the external access to these virtual machines let's go back to our virtual machines now in the vm2 it's still pinging vm1 and i will ping 100 which is doing it, yeah. So this host actually is connected through the physical interface and through the physical interface is coming here. If I remove this interface and we go back here, so that ping is stopped. And once I add that, port again back to our yeah the ping is started so if we go back to our drawing so we managed to connect the pci uh, card to the dpdk we take it out of the kernel we connect it to the to the obvious and we did the test the test of the connectivity now if i want to take back again this network interface back to the kernel i can do that by uh, i can remove that again from uh from our uh from the obvious switch and if i call that uh command for uh dpdk uh, dpdk stable user to dpdk uh dev bind so first dash dash status and it shows us that this interface is in the uh, dpdk compatible driver so it's in the dpdk world we will take it off here and we will put it back in the kernel to doing that you will say again dash dash point equal to so it's going to be e1000 e and and the pci address of that interface which is this one if I run this command dash dash status again now the interface is out of here and it is back on the kernel it's back on the kernel as ENS F1
if I do an IP link, sorry. Now we can see, oh, we got another interface here, ENS 3F1. So interface is back on the kernel. So kernel is managing this interface. And by, by, the, by the same command, changing it to UIO generic PCI, we will be able to move this interface on the, uh, to the GPDK world. So this was our demo about the DPDK. Uh, you know, we did uh, quite lots of stuff. So uh, we will put the, the URLs and more uh, text of the commands also as part of this demo. So this was our uh, demo about DPDK uh, for accessing these physical interfaces. Just imagine that you are trying to build some, some application like a deep packet inspection or firewall router or whatever. Uh, and you have a 40 gig or 100 gig interface and you don't want the Linux kernel to do any packet processing here. So you can just directly use the same method for mapping that 10 gig or 40 gig interface which you have directly to your application in DPDK. And you can tune the, 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 the DPDK in order to do fast processing, fast packet processing. There are lots of tuning options available and you can just directly use the CPU cores for doing your packet processing and any processing of the DPDK. Even with DPDK, if you look at the, uh, the Intel examples, they are able to limit the number of CPU cores presented, to, uh, presented for the Linux uh, kernel and use the rest of the CPU cores for doing the application processing, for doing the network processing on the DPDK. So there are lots of uh, flexibilities and options available in DPDK for, for creating this kind of uh, high performance networking applications. Uh, so this was about our demo. Please, uh, if you have any question, please, uh, you can write it in the forum or you can contact me directly. Uh, thank you very much.